Boy, I'm never too short. <laughs> Good morning. Now Luke's going to be even wrong. So great to have all of you here this morning. And if you're watching online this morning, welcome. Uh, beautiful setting. I think for Northwest Wisconsin, we have one of the prettiest settings in Clear Lake Park. So we're glad that you're here to worship this morning. Uh, got a few announcements. Vacation Bible School begins tonight at 6 p.m. at the First Lutheran Church in Clear Lake Community Vacation Bible School. <clears throat> Excuse me. Register your children uh, online. You can go to firstlutheclearlake.com, and on the lower right side, you can do it. Or you can bring your child tonight at 6 and register them when you get there. We're going to have an all-church family fun night uh, of softball Wednesday, August 23rd, 6 to 8 p.m. at Clear Lake Elementary Field. Uh, the evening schedule will be 6 o'clock softball for kids 10 and under at 7 o'clock. Some of the adults will try to show that they're really good and they'll... <laughs> from 11 and up. There'll be root beer floats and a lot of fun. So come and just cheer or play, whatever you can do. Um, there's a family carnival plan for Saturday, August 26th. So mark your calendars. It'll be from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, plan to invite friends, family, neighbors, etc., to this outreach event. There'll be food, games, balloons, cotton candy, snow cones, face painting, and fun. There's many opportunities for volunteers. If you've been waiting to volunteer for something and you're an adult, Leah would like to talk to you. Uh, you can sign up at Sign Up Central, which is that church. I don't know if it's over here too. It is. And uh, there'll be a brief meeting next Sunday after church concerning that. So um, if you'd like to really help with the kids and outreach, please sign up for that. 
there's a lot more announcements in your bulletin. Uh, check that out. Every Tuesday morning, there's a group that meets and prays for prayer concerns. And the box is right over on that table, and there's some cards there. If you have any prayer concerns, put them in before you leave today. And Tuesday, that group will pray for them. Also, you can put your offering in there if you'd like, or you can give online at unitedclubchurch.org. And, yeah, and click on online giving. So great to have all of you here. It just, you know, it's a blessing. Um, God's creation. I guess they can stand up and greet your neighbor.
technical difficulties. Broke a string on the guitar, but we'll be we'll be okay as long as the electricity doesn't go out too. So.
just our voices. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Father God, you are so worthy of praise. You are worthy of all of our praise. And that praise that if we don't cry out, uh, these very rocks and these very trees that are around us would cry out in praise. You are that worthy. And we just thank you for the breath in our lungs. You've given us to just reflect back up to you uh, the worship that you so greatly deserve because of the wonderful story that we get to be a part of that you sent your son to take away our sin. He bled and died for us, but he came back to life. And we pray a blessing on all of those that are being baptized today that are taking that step and doing that, that act to show that they have given their lives to you. We bless them and we thank you so much. You may be seated. Our first reading today is from Psalms 96. Sing a new song to the Lord. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord and praise his name. Each day proclaim the good news that he saves. Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. The gods of other nations are mere idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty surround him. Strength and beauty fill his sanctuary. O nations of the world, recognize the Lord. Recognize that the Lord is glorious and strong. Give to the Lord the glory he deserves. Bring your offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in all his holy splendor. Let all the earth tremble before him. Tell all the nations, the Lord reigns. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. He will judge all peoples fairly. Let the heavens be glad, and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the fields and their crops burst out with joy. Let the trees of the forest sing for joy. Before the Lord, for he is coming. He is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with justice and the nations with his truth. Our second reading today is from Matthew. 28, 16 through 20. Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Then Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the ends of the age. All right, I'm going to invite all of the construction workers uh, up here. Um, all of our uh, middle schoolers that went to Moose, and we had uh, three chaperones, myself and Lily Carlson and Gretchen Wahlberg. And we're just going to share with you just kind of an update of uh, where we've been the last uh, few days. So you guys can kind of come in a little closer here. So if you're not aware or don't know what Moose is, uh, Moose is defined as, or it's an acronym. I just had it up. Yeah. It is the most unbelievable urban camping experience. Uh, and 
we got to be in Buffalo, Minnesota for three days. And uh, that included a lot of games and activities. We had four different uh, worship sessions. We also had guest speakers that shared with us uh, throughout the last three days. And so I'm not going to tell you everything about uh, what we learned about there. I'll let a few of our youth share with you. But I can just tell you that, uh, and not everyone's going to share, but I'll tell you the ones that um, aren't sharing, I know that God was working in their lives as well. It was a real blessing for me to be able to be with them these last couple of days and just seeing the way God moved and the way that these kids have grown and were stretched uh, was just an awesome thing to see. And uh, I just love these youth. And so I'll just turn it over to them. Hi, my name is Anna Williamson. And I would say my favorite part of Moose was probably worship, getting to see all the kids just praise God, lifting their hands up. It was really cool to see all that happening. Um, I would say something that I took away was knowing that it doesn't matter how amazing you are at something or how good you are at a sport or an activity, um, God can still use you in amazing ways to bring people closer to God. Hi, I'm Maggie Elmer. Um, my favorite part of Moose was probably the worship, just seeing all the kids getting into um, the worship time and just praising the Lord and and it was just very powerful. The one thing that I would take away from Moose is that um, that God can use you for anything. It doesn't matter what age you are. He can use you for anything. Hi, um, my name is Liz Dietrich. Um, Moose was really a really great experience for me. Um, something that I can take away is that God can make something um, just ordinary and make it extraordinary. Um, and um, I really liked that um, to see like all the kids like praising God and that there really are kids that um, know Christ and they follow him. And um, something else that I thought was really amazing, um, we could donate money to this sex trafficking thing called um, Free that we could um, help people. And we raised about like uh, $1,590. Um, and we all did that just yesterday. Everyone donated money just yesterday. So. Hi, I'm Ella Mae Wahlberg, and I was at Miss this past week. Um, my favorite thing about it was probably the worship, too. I took away that we should um, give our abilities, our disabilities, our creativity and our availability to God because he can use those things to bring people closer to him. Hi, I'm Isaac there, and my one of my favorite things I did at Moose was go to Valley Fair. And one thing I learned was an acronym for a prayer, and the P means praise, the R means repent, and you should repent and confess your sins to God. And... The A is ask. This is where you sh should ask for stuff like healing or help. And the last part is yield. And this is where you wait for God to speak to you. And I want to thank the church for letting us go to Moose. Hi, I'm Josie Tanner. This was my first year at Moose. And at first I was really looking forward to Valley Fair but after I got there, my favorite part was definitely the worship. Um, the worship team was amazing there. They, and the best part that I took away was that you can praise God with pretty much anything. You can use creativity to um, use God in like everyday life. I wasn't preparing to say anything, but we had an awesome group, so we'll just go with that. We had a great group. Everybody here is just awesome, and we had fun, and our group is the best behaved children, <laughs> or you. <laughs> so we had fun. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, I'll just echo everything that they said. And uh, I'm, again, this was an awesome group. It made it very easier, easy for us as leaders. We were on time or ahead of schedule the whole time we were there. We were the first ones back on the bus after Valley Fair. We were the first ones there from uh, where we were staying to get back for breakfast. Uh, we cleaned up after ourselves. We were very responsible. When other chaperones are trying to find their kids scattered around Valley Fair, uh, we just got to sit on the bus and wait, and uh, it was great. So if anyone next year, uh, this is for middle school students, so if your kids did not get a chance to go this year, uh, this is a, an event that's uh, put together by the Northwest Conference, uh, which is our district within the Covenant Church. And so this is all coming to churches that come together, all middle school kids. Uh, they've been doing this, I don't know how many years they've done this now, but uh, they do a fantastic job putting this together. It's very organized, it's very well run. And for the leaders, uh, they make it easy on us. And so as an adult, if you wanna go with your kids, maybe next summer would be their first time going, I'd encourage you to come as a chaperone. Uh, they feed us, we do sleep on the floors. Uh, so that part, you know, <laughs> bring an air mattress um, but they make it easy for you as volunteers and for the kids they absolutely love it it's a lot of fun so if you get a chance to go next summer I'd love to see more kids go and enjoy this so again thank you for your support uh, for this opportunity to go to Moose oh we had 14 14 kids oh they uh, they were actually planning on maybe 250 maybe 300 kids uh, this year they actually had close to 400 kids sign up so a lot of middle schoolers uh, smells were very interesting in certain parts of the church we were staying so but but we made it everyone survived so <laughs> thank you moment of prayer here and um, thank God for our again Josh and and um, all the kids and volunteers and everything so thanks again praise the Lord and um, also want to say thank you to all the the men that were there yesterday for the um, deconstruction we're de we're not deconstructing our faith we're deconstructing the church <laughs> so but it looks pretty cavernous in there like it's really um, yeah you're gonna be amazed when you see it so thank you guys for your hard work excellent and um, just a prayer request here we have um, okay so Mona Renfro who is Janet Marlette's daughter is still in the hospital so we're going to pray for her, for her recovery um, from surgery. And she's still in the ICU. And I guess she's developed a little bit, some pneumonia as well. So we just really, I, I believe that as we pray together, you know, there's, there's a lot of power in prayer. And um, so we're going to pray that she's going to come through this thing. So um, lift that up in prayer. And, of course, Vacation Bible School praying for that that's going to be a great time as we partner with first lutheran so that is at first lutheran if you have any children or grandchildren that you want to bring to it it's at first lutheran starting tonight so it'll be great and um meal at five meal at five and then and then it starts at at six okay thank you so um also, was there any, um, I don't know, not to put people on the spot, but anybody have a testimony or uh, about, uh, we prayed for healing last week, was, and I think I heard a couple things, but does anybody want to share anything that, uh, that God did for you as we were together last week? It's always better if you share it, because I might get it wrong, but yeah, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, pray for Wendy. <laughs> Praise 
Praise the Lord. Amen. That's beautiful. Praise God for that. Awesome. God is so good. All right. And um, okay, well, and, and let's just let's just pray together. So, Father God, we just say thank you, Lord, and thank you for what you did for Wendy and for others, Lord, bringing healing and. Um, God, we just say thank you, Jesus, for your kindness, your goodness, your mercy, Lord. And Father God, we praise you for your how awesome you are. Great and awesome is the Lord. And God, we do we lift up Mona Renfro and we pray together in Jesus' name that she would be completely healed. And that even beginning right now, Lord, even today, that she's gonna begin to feel way better. We pray that that um, pneumonia would go away and that she will be set free and bring her through father in the name of jesus christ we thank you lord praise your name and um thank you father for moose again for the kids and all that went on thank you jesus thank you for vacation bible school that we lift up today we pray that 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 would be just a powerful wonderful um outreach that it is and bless all the workers and and all the children that come we pray for salvations we pray for just great things to happen at vacation bible school lord we thank you for wendy for healing her again and, and god we do pray that her um, flu or whatever it is would go away quickly in jesus name and this and many things that i'm not remembering lord we just lift up to you we say thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Another one was Betty. Um, uh, oh, gee. I'm blanking out here. Okay, so Betty and Roger, um, the sister of Levon. Uh, <laughs> She called, and she said that uh, her something with her foot was healed, too. And so she wanted to share that. So praise God for that. Just, uh, yeah, she was supposed to have surgery, even. And anyway, it's gone. Thank you, Jesus. And God is so good. We just worship him, you know. And, and you know, it's good to praise the Lord. And sometimes, you know, I... And I'm not saying that you have to raise your hands when you're praising God, but the trees do, right? And, and I think we can feel free. You know, I used to be really freaked out what people think because I'm not naturally, you know, I am Swedish, you know, so I'm like, oh, you know, it's, it's hard for me, you know, it's hard for me. But, uh, but you know what? Um, I don't care what people think of me anymore. I just... I don't care. I, I mean, not that I don't. I, I do, but, but I don't, too. <laughs> so, so it's good to be free. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't we just raise our hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We worship you, and in, we invite you to come. Holy Spirit, just continue to pour out up, upon us, Lord. We want more, Lord. We want more revival, more renewal. God, Holy Spirit, come. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God for that. Praise the Lord. Okay, so um, celebrating baptism. So I'm just going to say a, a couple words or just a little bit here. And you know that Jesus Christ, and we know the gospel, you know, we, kn we know that Jesus Christ left the glory of heaven and was born into this world for the purpose of going to the cross for our sins and for dying in our place. And really, when Jesus was on the cross, you think of all, of, you know, I think of my sins alone. And man, you know, but he paid for the sins of all people. And we just say, thank you, Father. You know, so Jesus was on the cross paying for our sins, dying in our place. He was our substitute on the cross. And then he died, he was buried 
on the third day he rose again. And, um, and then over a 40-day period, he appeared at various times to, to his disciples and to a lot of other people. And then here in Matthew 28, it says here in verse 18, Jesus. this is the last thing that Jesus said before he ascended back into heaven. Jesus came and told his disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you and be sure of this, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. So that was, the we call it the Great Commission, you know, and, and he tells us to go and make disciples. And so we want people, we want other people to, um, to come to the Lord. And, you know, we can be part of that, we can be part of that process with, um, just in even in small ways, you know, even in small ways, even this morning, Matt Thayer and I, we, I mean, this is very little, but we just went around and invited people to church. I don't know if anybody is here from that, but if you are, welcome. Thank you for being here. But um, you can do little things to help make disciples, even just inviting someone to go to church or inviting them or sharing with them something that God has done for you or it, it can be very simple. Sometimes we get intimidated. We think, man, I can't do that. I'm just a normal person. You know, well, God uses normal people, right? <laughs> I mean, we're just, we're just uh, his creation. And anyway, um, so we're to go and make disciples of all nations. There's a whole lot of other people in the world that have never heard about Jesus. They don't know the name of Jesus. And they need to know him. Because it's only through Jesus that we can be forgiven. It's only through Jesus that we can have the gift of eternal life. And Jesus said, I am the, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So we're to baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And um, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. So being a disciple is not an easy thing. It's a hard thing to be a disciple of Jesus. And we think, well, wait a minute. I thought there was 12 disciples. Well, there were 12 original disciples. And the one betrayed Jesus, Judas, you know, went and, um, you know, died in, in dishonor and killed himself and so forth. But, and then he was replaced by, um, by Matthias. Good, I was going to, that was the Bible trivia thing, and you already got it, so thank you. Okay, Matthias was then the 12th disciple that, that took on Judas's ministry. And, and did you know that every one of those disciples, um, except for one, died a horrible death? You know, Peter was crucified upside down. I think, um, you know, Matthew was, I probably get it wrong, but he, I think he was beheaded. You know, there was just different grisly things that they went through. But John himself was tortured and imprisoned. I mean, he did, he did die a natural death, but he suffered a lot. Now, um, those are the original 12 disciples. And through the ages, they passed, you know, they passed the gospel to the people in their time and then so on and so forth. And here we are 2,000 years later you know, that someone told us about Jesus, and now we go and tell others about Jesus. And um, today we are going to baptize some disciples, some new disciples. Now, I'm not saying that they're going to die a grisly death, I hope, you know. <laughs> we don't know, but I sure pray not, you know. But, but it's not easy to be a disciple because... Jesus said this in Matthew 9, 23. He said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. So it's something we do every day. It's not just a, oh, I said the, sinner, I said the sinner's prayer. Now, I'm, now I can just go live however I want to. And No. 
we deny ourselves, take up our cross daily and follow him every day. And when we mess up and we screw up or sin, what do we do? We ask for forgiveness and we get right back with the Lord. We don't let it discourage us. You know, we just confess it and we get right back with the Lord. And it's a daily thing. It's, it, hey, this is a marathon. It's a marathon, not, not just a half marathon, right? And we made it through our half marathon, by the way, Leah and I. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you, Jesus. We can even, like, oh, ouch. <laughs> it's hurting, but we made it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. So, um, but anyway, following Jesus, it's, it's not a sprint, okay? It's a marathon where you keep going, and we're his disciples. Baptism is the beginning of that, okay? Even our Lord, Jesus, was, was baptized. Now, um, we know that the first, say, 30 years of his life, Jesus, now he was without sin, right? And, but when he was baptized, that began his years of ministry, okay? He was anointed by the Holy Spirit. He's, that's why he's called the, the Christ or the anointed one. And so, um, and after that, he began to, to his ministry of preaching the gospel and healing and raising people from the dead and so forth. But, and that began in earnest his journey to the cross when he was baptized. So, um, Anyway, baptism is the beginning, and, and in baptism, we, we, what we, we're seeing is a, really a picture of how we, we leave the old behind, and we begin a new life. And so here's a scripture from 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11, where Paul um, Okay, Paul says, he says, Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Well, we say, wait a minute, I do wrong. You know, do, am I perfect? No. But what he's talking about is those that continually live in a pattern of sin. Okay, we all stumble at times, right? But if you, if you continue on in sin... You will not inherit the kingdom of God. That means you're not going to go to heaven, okay? He says, um, don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or are abusive or cheat people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. And that's just a partial list, by the way. There's a whole lot of other things that we could put in there. And then he says, some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed. Okay, you were washed in the blood of Jesus, right? Praise God for that. You were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. And by the way, that's, you know what? Um, praise God that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We're not, we're not immediately perfect when we come to Jesus. It, it's, we're not going to be perfect till we get to heaven, right? But, and, and there might be things that we struggle with, maybe even addictions or, or things like that. But guess what? The Lord, he will never give up on us. And we just keep going, right? And it's a process. It's, it's a lifelong thing of, daily denying ourselves, taking up our cross and following him. The Lord gives us victory as we go along. But don't be discouraged and don't, don't think, well, man, I, I still struggle with things. Well, hey, we all struggle with things, okay? But, but guess what? God loves us. And, and as we go along, he's going to give us the victory. He's going to help us. So... Um, the last one I'm going to read is this other verse, and it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. So really with baptism, again, as we go into the water, it's a picture, right? 
it reminds us of the fact that Jesus Christ went and he died for our sins. He was buried. And when we're in baptism, our old self is buried. And, and it goes under the water. It's a picture. And then we, Jesus rose from the dead. And we come out of that water. And it's resurrection. It's the wonderful forgiveness of Christ. And it's a new life. If anyone is in Christ, the old is gone. The new has come. And um, that is, I love that about baptism. And so we celebrate today with our friends that are being baptized. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to ask them to come up now. Each one that's going to be baptized, why don't you come on up here? We're just so thankful for each one here. And, um, so today, our friends here are presenting themselves for the sacrament of baptism. We rejoice in God's promises to them. The psalmist declares that the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who fear him, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. And the Apostle Peter, speaking by the Holy Spirit, says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, I'm going to read it again. He said, All authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. Isn't it wonderful to know that Jesus is with us always? Praise God for that. Okay, obeying the word of our Lord Jesus Christ and certain of his presence with us, we baptize those he calls to be his disciples. In baptism, we celebrate what God has done for us, claiming us in Christ as his own, cleansing us of sin, and renewing us in the Holy Spirit. In baptism, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection, being raised to newness, <coughs> excuse me, newness of life. Through baptism, we also become part of his body, the church. For all this, God's grace, your commitment, and your fellowship with us in the church, we give praise to God. And so I'm going to ask a couple questions here. And um, do you now desire to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, and do you desire to live as his faithful disciple? If so, say, I do. Okay. And they have publicly confessed their faith in Christ. Praise God for that. And, and so um, I always encourage people to share something of maybe what God has done for them and, or maybe a brief testimony or something, and, and so I know that not everybody is, is um, a speaker, you know, public speaker, but I say, when you share, it's way more powerful than when I, when I do, because people are used to me, but when other people share, you know, it's powerful. So, does this work, Bert? This, this one. Okay, so... Okay. Is it is it on? Okay. We'll just Yeah. Um so I'm Emily Rosser and a little bit of my testimony is that um 
So my parents got divorced about three years ago, and I stopped going to church. Um, and then my best friend, Kristen, she invited me to come to youth group here, and I really enjoyed that. And then I met Simeon and his family, and um, they just really showed me what it was like to be a Christian and to live that life. Um, and so I really thank them for that, and I thank God for just um, bringing all these people into my life um, and to getting me to where I am today. Amen. Amen. My name is Sarissa Hardy. Um, I thank God for being here. I think all my kids were a gift from God, but my daughter was especially. When I was pregnant for her, I moved to Wisconsin, and they found my cancer. So I am here because of him. Amen. I'm Emily Becker, and I um, I found Jesus nine years ago, and well, about nine years ago, and um, he's just done so, he, as my savior, he's done so much work in me, and I'm here today to um, to take the next step of not just praying alone in my room, but to uh, spread the word of Jesus, and um, he's done so much. I'll do a quick testimony, yeah. too, and make this yeah. exciting here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. if I can make it. <laughs> Um, so in January, I maybe put the mic just a little closer, Emily. Okay. In January, I went to the prayer room and, um, I, uh, shared that I had alopecia and they prayed for me and my alopecia stopped happening, um, in holy fall. Um, and then, uh, around Monday, Thursday, Pastor Dan prayed for me for healing and my hair has been growing rapidly and well. And I wanted to say that praise and testimony. <laughs> and if anything happens during the baptism, so you're prepared. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I hate public speaking. Um, <laughs> I'm Misty Finsfeld, and I am up here because um, the Holy Spirit has been driving me like crazy to come and proclaim my faith publicly and to start speaking out louder. I prefer to be in the background and quietly serving. Um, I have loved serving the Lord for many years, and now he's encouraging me to take this next step to speak louder, show my voice, and stretching me to be, I guess you would say, um, more in your face. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Ella Mae Wahlberg, and I am getting baptized because I know and believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and uh, I believe that baptism is showing an example of your faith in Jesus and your relationship with him. Hi, my name is Ryan Wahlberg, and I believed in Jesus as my Lord and Savior as long as I can remember. I definitely keep growing in my faith as I get older, but uh, this is an outward expression of what I already believe. Hi, my name is Travis Munson, and some things God's done in my life is he's blessed me with a big family, 12 siblings, and two awesome parents. <laughs> Hi, my name is Nathan, and I'm basically the same with Travis. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mark Munson, and I'd like to publicly dis display my faith. Hi, my name is Henry. I pretty much agree with my brother, Travis. Good morning. My name is Nathan, and I've been a Christian since I was a little kid. Um, ever since I was young, I always had faith in God, and the de my definition of a baptism is um, showing your acceptance of Jesus in your heart. Okay. Well, um, I think what we're going to do is you, you guys can sit down for a minute, and we're going to have the one more song, and then right after our close, closing this part of it, um, we will head down to the water. And we'll go for the baptism, and then, um, and then after everyone is out, um, 
we will have a little prayer for everyone. But uh, as the we'll, we'll welcome the worship team up now. Thank you. And then we'll we'll have uh, after that we'll have some food. <laughs> but I just was was uh, reminded that you know it is a little low here, so I don't have the problem. If you're like like Luke or someone like that, you might hit your head. So just watch it uh, when you go in there. Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty
you there in a couple minutes.